welcome. David. Welcome to the Affording Freedom Podcast. We are a weekly podcast that talks about personal finances and your behaviors. Our hope is to serve you in such a way that you can experience all that life has to offer free from debt and shame. I'm David. And I'm Cade. And today we're talking about freedom. What does it mean? What is identity? How do we mix freedom into our identity? Yeah, a little beginner's guide to financial if you will. freedom, <laughs> if you will, as some might say. <laughs> so thanks for joining us and let's jump right in. Okay. Oh, we're just jumping? Yeah, we're just jumping, man. Yeah. I didn't, you know, you said it, <laughs> but like, did I believe it? I don't know. That's the thing. That's the thing. Hey. I, I want you to know What's that up? I what love getting want? to chat with you, man. That's just it. That was just wow. a friend to friend. Yeah. Wow. And we also we both just moved our computers in at the same time. Yeah, that felt good. Oh, here we go. I'm, see, I'm getting, co- I'm getting comfortable. Yeah, I'm you know? here. I'm cozy. That's what we're doing. Uh, B. Man, it's good to see your face. It is. It's good to see your face. It's just it make, makes me happy. It needs to happen so like, more often. Yeah. So there, yeah, there we say, should we we should live near each other? I don't know. What? Uh, don't, did I just don't. record that? Yeah. But it, did I just say that live? Wow. Yeah. Did Did Katie hear it? Did Rachel hear <laughs> it? That's the thing. See, listener, hmm. we used to live near each other, and uh, <laughs> down the road, down the hallway, down the, road, down the hallway. <laughs> Yeah, shared a bed. Shared, <laughs> shared. <laughs> you know, all was, four of us. All four of us snuggled up. Snuggled up. Mm. No, mm-hmm. it is. And then now, now that time is over, and it's sad. And we miss it. And we're gonna bring yeah. it back. We're gonna run it back. We're gonna run it back. <laughs> no doubt. No well, doubt. that's that's what we that's what we want to do. But I think I think a nice thing because again, it's the beginner's guide to financial freedom. Yep. Right. And I think what we <laughs> the the obvious thing that we need to talk about. I think is one, um, financial freedom is not the norm, <laughs> right? Oh, like, interesting. I, I think that is far, I think the latest statistic is 77% of Americans, this is on mint.com, which I actually, really cool service. Again, not a plug. We don't get anything for it. <laughs> shout out to mint. Just, shout, shout out. out. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just mint is, mint is actually a really cool service. And, um, they said that 77% of Americans, uh, don't have a thousand dollars in their savings account. Wow! And I would venture to argue that that's still that's not financially free just be, just to have a thousand dollars. Oh no, that's like I mean, because stress like fine. And I think it was eighty six percent of Americans, according to Mint. Now these statistics again don't quote me exact, but I know they're well above sixty five. Okay. I know every, every stat well above sixty five. If you read the blog, those those stats are accurate. Mm. But this is like I'm having to spit Shout that out. here. Shout out to Shout the out blog. To, yeah, man. To the blog. Yeah, <laughs> to the blog. Um, but at, at least you know, at least sixty-five and above. But I'm pretty sure this was eighty-seven percent of Americans stress about money daily. Wow. Yeah. Daily. And I, daily. Like I, finances is a daily stressor, which is just kind of wild. I mean, it, it's it's really. Um, I think it's true in my life. Like, and you know, my wife. You know, my wife and I are. Um, we've, we've done well and we've, my wife has a great job and I've, I've had good career success. And, um, I think we live in a, you know, we're trying to act out these principles, which is something so cathartic about affording freedom, just writing and talking mm. just cause it's like, you know, reinstilling that confidence and, you know, these are truths, but you kind of, you can't just accept the truth once you have to live with the truth. Right. No doubt. And, no doubt. and yeah, <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. And, uh, but like stress just kind of creeps in no matter what, how mm. much money you make, if you're not grounded, right? That's interesting. And, I, Cause I, I would say reflecting on my own life, it's often. Yeah. But I, I, I don't know if it's I personally, it's not daily. Now my, my, wa- my wife and I are very different. She, I think she would say that she does in some sense. Um, not that it, you know, and I think probably important to say that like stress does not necessarily mean it like consumes your day or like. No, no your emotions, but yeah, but stress I, wiggles I its say, way in there, right? Like I wouldn't say I, I I struggle daily, and I also wouldn't say I'm financially secure. <laughs> okay, well, David, <laughs> just just a, a side note about David. You know, we got into bios a little bit, but man, 
if I had to describe David, like a few, a few words, this might be a fun thing to do. Like let's oh, just boy. describe each other in here a couple of things. Come on, but, let's do it. No, David is my guy. You know, I love David. David's literally a brother to me. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little. This is all the setup. Say, no, all the setup. You think it is? That's normal. That's normally what I would do is tear it all. all. No, David might, you know, kind of like the great uh, Gatsby quote, like F. Scott Fitzgerald. I, I'm going to screw it up, but he just has this capacity. He's so positive, like genuinely. David is just like one of the, no. It's true though, man. Like you look at any situation, and you you don't have to you don't have to be told to like look for the best in something. Like you're so you're like the world's that. greatest hype man. You know what I mean? <laughs> like about anything, you're like you got a freaking shake. Mm, you know, like, you're like, oh, like yeah, but you're, like, you're kidding. Like no matter what it is, you know. Like, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. That was I, really I think, kind. Yeah, but that, it's true. It's true. So, like, I, I'm not surprised that because, like, you just have such a positive outlook on life, and, and honestly, I envy it in in so many different ways. But it's just so positive. Hello, my and, turn. Oh no, to describe you. Stop. Yeah, this Stop. is happening, and it's interesting because I think it's along the same vein, just kind of like a different nuance. Is like, I think you always find the hope in any situation, like. I, I think mm. there's a sense of positivity of like, come on, man, it's okay. And sometimes it feels fake. I, I, I don't think it's fake, but it can come off as fake. <laughs> you know, like people can be like, no way. There's no yeah. way that guy's Get for real. real. Yeah. yeah. It's Get true. Real. Who yeah. shares that? No way. Yeah. Who shares that? But, <laughs> but Kate, you have a way of like, I can come to you with any bad decision I've ever made, any mistake, mm. any, you know, what we as Christians would call sin. I can bring that to you and you would just like, dude, there's always hope. And like find the legitimate hope that's in it, like the, an authentic source for it and why we can move forward. And I've always appreciated that about you. Well, thanks, man. Yeah. I, I, I just have like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll open it up a little bit. Like value to me is so important because I feel like my value, mm -hmm. especially growing up, was just not really highlighted, right? Yeah. And so I just want... And I think because I'm not a I'm not a positive person by nature, even a little bit, but I always like anyone that's going through anything, I want your value to never be attacked or hurt. Right. Mm, and so yeah. I think that's where that hope comes from. It's not necessarily that you haven't it's like, well, no, 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 you, you know, you are different than your actions. Your actions or you are not the same thing. And yeah. Like, and, and it's you, not that you it's not yeah. that you don't hold me accountable, right? Yeah. Like, it's not like for sure. You don't ever say like, "Oh, that actually wasn't a bad decision." That's fine. Like you yeah. say, "Wow, you messed up, man." Here's you know, and then there's some real hope behind that. So for sure, yeah, yeah. and yeah, that totally so. goes into the the value thing. Yeah, you're making sure I don't lose my personal value in myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I think it's, I think it's important because it just it gets attacked on all fronts, and you know, yeah. So all that to come back to, I don't stress yeah. about finances. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I what probably a, what should. A... <laughs> Well, and I, and I think that, you know, what a, what a nice little, what a, what a nice little rabbit hole we went on, you know, that was, that a little was bit cute. of razzle. Yeah. Oh, a little bit of dazzle. yeah, here we go. I'm sticking with dazzle. It's fine. I've embraced it. It's good. Um, <laughs> but like, I think the only thing certain about your financial, your, or your finances in general is that there's mm -hmm. going to be stress. Like, gotcha. yeah. like there's going to be a curveball. Like if yep. life will throw something, you know, just difficult. And I think, you know, for me, at least, and I'll be curious because we haven't talked about this. Like this is listener, this is going to be tough because we prepped a grand total of about 94 seconds for this, for this, uh, you know, this I thought, and I thought yeah. at, you know, mm -hmm. 15 of those precious 94 seconds was spent us saying, let's not talk about how little we prepped for this. Yeah, no, it was, it was, but also at the same time, you know, the <laughs> audience deserves, it. yeah, it's, it's good thing. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. But I think for me that your stress is always just a matter of your perception. Mm. So like, give me a for little, sure. give me a little, what do you think about that? What do you think about that little nugget there? Man, I think that there's a heck a lot of a truth in that. In fact, I, I think that most of um, my pastoral counseling, if I will, yeah. which are, you know, is an array of issues, which also include financial, um, Involves. We'll have to get into that at some point. That would be uh, a, that'd be a yeah, that'd yeah, be a fun thing that. to do. Let's just like little, you know, bookmark that. For later. Yeah, save, save yeah. For later. There you go. <laughs> save now. <laughs> Is uh, 
giving a, a more eternal or infinite perspective onto it of like, I know this breakup, you know, teenage high schooler seems really difficult right now. And, and, you know, we legitimate like, yes, it is. And like, we validate it, we empathize those types of things, but then we always put in perspective because the, the stress of the breakup can, can cause real damage and can make life more difficult than it really needs to be for this period of time. And life is precious and we don't need to miss out on it. So let's, let's just put some perspective on it as to how to process this and and how to get through it onto the other side. So I think that's totally true. And and I think what's interesting is like, there's like this, like, you know, whenever you're talking about stress, it's more about getting through it rather than acknowledging what happened first. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so like, whenever we're talking about stress, it's like, there's almost like this sense of urgency to not be stressed by the thing that you're being Uh, stressed about. So true. Rather than like accepting your stress, right? That's like, so and, I, and I And I think, you know, because the typical, at least for me, like whenever I'm stressed, it's, you know, I used to get so frustrated. Like my brother used to get so mad at me all the time. Shout out, Caleb. Caleb, Shout if you don't, li- if, if Caleb out, doesn't Caleb. listen to this, I'm going to be mad. I, and this now, this we'll know. Caleb. now we'll know. This <laughs> yeah. is for, Caleb, this is for you right now. But he would get so frustrated because he would, he would act like, you know, he, he used the example with me all the time that there, he'd be like, you know, Cade, you're so stressed out. And you do the equivalent of throwing a blanket over an elephant and you go, well, the elephant's not there anymore. Yeah. And it's like, that's what I feel like whenever I'm stressed though. It's like, I, I don't want to look at it, honestly. I yeah. just kind of put my head in the sand. Yeah. And, you know, I think the idea is, you know, if stress makes us blind to the path, right? There's always a way forward, but we may not be able to see it. Then how do we find it with stress, right? And, and I think that first step is acknowledging always. And, and it's ironic because all we want is that path out. It's all we're looking for really. But when we're stressed, we actually can't see it. And I think what you're saying is so true because when you're trying to just, when your focus is on getting through stress without that perspective of having acknowledged it first, and you're just trying to get through it, it's going to seem eternal, right? It's going to seem so much bigger and so much longer than it really is. But when you acknowledge it and you accept the proper perspective, well, then the path out like almost shows itself to you. Like it, yeah. it becomes so much more natural to get, to not be stressed. For sure. And so like tying that into finances, right? Like I think, you know, especially now with social media, you get everyone's best all the time. Yeah. Right. Like it's always, it's the, it's the facade, you yeah. know, like it's, do you really think that person at 7 a.m. looked that good? Well, probably not. It probably took a little bit of time, right? And then you start to question, like, that's you at your best, really? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you're David, again, podcast voice, podcast face for me. That's it. You know, <laughs> this is no editing, YouTube. This is just us doing us right here. Uh, so that's oh, pretty man. good. But <laughs> I. I <laughs> oh, no, I love it. I love it. <laughs> That was just so arrogant and judgmental. Just know that, like, no, that was me being sarcastic and just joking. But anyways, as you were, no, what were you saying? No, no, this is David. Probably something this is... important. <laughs> no, but I, I think, uh, like tying it into finance and stress, it's, it's like we have this idea that we want to be financially free, and we kind of all have. It's pretty easily, da- you know, daydream, idealize where we are. But I think in order to know where we want to go, the first step is actually knowing where we're at. Like yeah. realistically today, yeah, and just being honest about your relationship with money, and I think that's one interesting that like you actually have a you bring in a feeling of weight with money, right? Yeah. And so like kind of I I'm, I guess David like you know you mentioned that you're not really stressed about money like that's something that, that normally doesn't happen, but like what's your relationship with money too? Hmm. Like like whenever you think about money, like yeah. what are the like is there is there worry whenever I say the word? Like if I had to. If I say money, yeah. what's the first thing that comes into your head? Yeah, so it, it also depends on um, past tense, present tense, or future tense. Ooh, I love that. Yeah, so, where are you at today? So, so present tense, it yeah. is, um, there's always enough, you know, God is abundant. He provides, I'm not worried about it. Yeah. Past tense, a lot of shame, made bad decisions. They're actually, you know, there isn't... Um, a, an infinite amount of money and um burn to bridges stuff like that future sure. tense chest gets tight um and there is a lot of stress because there's a certain lifestyle that my wife and i want and yeah. we feel um you know in our lowest of lows we feel incapable of being able to do that because of past financial decisions 
and yeah. the debt that we carry now is preventing us from living the lifestyle that we want to in the near future. So yeah, most of the time in the present, you know, no matter where I am on that timeline in the present, I'm feeling like it's, it's all good. God is yeah. abundant. God provides. I love it. No, that's- I'm happy. But when I sit and meditate on either side of the, of the time spectrum, there's yeah. some sort of stress or shame that that pops up. Well, yeah, and, and I think that's you know, man, I, I don't, I think I've never asked you that question, which is no. kind of interesting. And it, and it, and it, man, it's it's really helpful because like there's, you know, if you just take your relationship with money, and then if you start from the way you feel about money, all of your decisions make sense, and that's true for yeah. everybody. Yeah. Right. Like if you have a, like the idea, you know, a scarcity mindset versus an abundance mindset, mm-hmm. like, you know. What was the quote that you said? Like the, uh, like true life lies in the middle. The Aristotle quote. I love quotes, guys. I'm sorry. I, I love. Um, oh, it's not. Ah. Necess- it's not necessarily a quote that I have, but it is this idea. Like his whole virtual virtue um, theory is that all virtue lies in in the middle. Yeah. And so balance. you can yes, you can have too much. You know, too much courage is just stupidity. Too little courage is just yeah. cowardice. Right in the middle is courage. Yeah. I love that. Like, uh, yeah. And and I I think there's, but it's crazy how your relationship with money just shows. I mean, it can really like, if you just say, this is my relationship. And then you just, you remove yourself from you and you just put on a nameless face and you say, how would this person act? It makes so much sense. Right. Hmm. Like it just, it's, it's crazy. And I think a, 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 a step that people miss so often, whenever they're looking at, um, like stress about money, all those things is, not being honest with where you are because there's not a, a the path is not a one size fits all, yeah. you know? And so like, I think that's the whole thing is, you know, there are a lot of ways to be successful. There are a lot of ways to make money. There's a, there's a, about a thousand ways to budget. Right. Yeah. And I think yeah. that the easiest thing to understand is like, you know, whenever we're trying to um, go like, you know, really go on this financial freedom journey. Right. Mm-hmm. Like we, we all know we need to manage our, our money. Yeah. Right. And, and, the the easiest thing to do to manage your money, like no one has to explain this to you, spend less than you make. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's like if, in- if if you do that, that feels like a good idea. It's instinctive. Yeah. But but why don't you do that? Because me telling you, like it's kind of like, you know, Cade, you should probably not have pizza. Well, I know that. <laughs> but your boy loves loves Look at like me. W- yeah. Look at me. Is, yeah. is, is somebody telling you this? No, that's well, my yeah, wife. Okay. You've met my wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, Rachel's awesome. Sorry, inside joke. <laughs> inside joke. Because but, whoever's telling you they're wrong, you should have yeah. pizza. Yeah, it's it's delicious. Live but, you know, it. probably not six nights a week. That's probably who's that's to be, say. That's be, <laughs> <laughs> between you and your doctor. Yeah, right. That's, yeah, <laughs> he would say no to you. But that's okay. that's the neither here nor there. But like. <laughs> Again, I, I think spending less than you make makes sense. Why you don't do that yeah. is, yeah. I mean, if we're being, it's just tied to that, your identity, what the view of money that you have. And I think that's yeah. just so, it's, it's, it's a step that's just so often not even talked about. Yeah. So again, break, when you know who you are, you know what to do. And so I break it down that. for us. As somebody um, maybe listening is like, this is the first like, time i'm really associating identity with finances or yeah. even um first time even really considering identity where does somebody start with that where's a good place to start when reflecting about identity who am i yeah well and i i think who am i well i'm not smart enough to answer that one i think we could have a long a long time talking about that and but i think what's so nice is like there are practical steps that you can take whenever you're talking about, because especially your money, you know, it's, you're going to have to help me with the Bible verse, my, got you, Mr. Pastor, but the, uh, uh, it's the money is the gateway to your heart verse roughly because where, where your treasure is there, your heart will be also boom. And I think that's like, I think treasure, that's a, I can even practically take that out. It's like where your money is and what you view about money Mm -hmm. is like, it's a gateway to your heart, whether you know it or not, Mm -hmm. (laughs) even in a sense of, if you're being generous with it and you realize it's yeah. a tool, it's still like, it still reveals your heart. Right. That's good. Yeah. And so I think one of the things that you should start doing is whenever I think money and I hear about money, what do I feel immediately in that moment? Hmm. Right. Am I, am I happy? Yeah. Like, does it give me a sense of security? 
do I think it's worthless? Do I have this sense of it's not for me entitled? Am I angry about it? Am I frustrated? Right? Whenever I see someone doing well with money and they're, they're financially free and they're living a life, is it jealousy or is it envy? Is it excited for them? Is it all those things are just actually just revealing your root, right? Yeah. Everything reflects back on you, right? So yeah, go ahead. Two things to reflect on that. One, the difference between jealousy and envy. Mm. Interesting Mm -hmm. that you differentiated them. And then Mm -hmm. two, I think the opposite end is also true of when you walk by somebody like a homeless person on the street, what do you think of them? Yeah. Right? So are, good. Are you condemning them? Are you judging them? Are you thinking yeah. less of them? For sure. Um, yeah. Those were the, yeah. my two thoughts after hearing you. <laughs> so no, just, I, let's start with the jealousy and envy. What? What's the yeah. difference? Man, I I, I think it, jealousy in a sense. <clears throat> I think whenever you're you're jealous of something, it's more of a reflection that uh, you want it, and uh, not a sense, not it's more of a sense that you don't have more of an entitlement sense, mm. right? Envy to me is more of an anger sense that someone else has it and you don't. Jealousy is about you not having it. It's selfish. Envy oh, is about okay. someone else is having it more than you. And I think there's like a, and I think typically I would consider someone envious. Typically if you have envy, and this is just my definition, right? Like words are kind of yeah fun and unique like that. You can kind of add your own context. You can play with them. Yeah, you can. It's it's yeah. it's exciting, right? And uh, um, I think you can add. Yeah, I, I think envy again is more of that that external weight on the other person, where jealousy is more of an internal reflection. Interesting. So I, okay. I kind of, okay. and I think just just continuously peeling back that layer. But again, just looking at how you spend money, like does it give you joy to spend money? Mm. Almost if there's something that gives you joy. What gives you joy about spending money? If you like eating out, why are you actually eating out? Are you stressed? Right? Like one of the things I do with my clients all the time and and just like, you know, if you get your paycheck, what's the first thing you spend your paycheck on? Right? If what's the first thing that you do? Because I'm telling you if, if, and and intentionally spend it on. Yeah. What's What's the first thing that you do with that? Are you eating out as soon as you get money? If you get a tax, if you get a tax return, what are you doing? If it's not like, if, if it's spending, it's something like, then what you're saying is I have a sense of lack. Right, like you're uh, if if you're immediately trying to spend what you make, it's a sense of lack, right? And, and, and a, no and shame to, on that, but it's, but you have to be honest with where you're at in order to move past it, right? And maybe to connect it to our talk about freedom, that sense of lack is actually, in a way, enslaving you. It, it is not in a way; it is. It it's absolutely contro- yeah. it's controlling your decisions. It's controlling your values. It's controlling. Sure. Um, yeah, I think that was a really good good thing to point out i I know i'm trying to reflect uh intentionally because everything's automated now you know so like for sure i I may have like bought gas first but like that's not like an intentional purchase that's just like i needed gas in the car sure so so after getting my paycheck the first intentional thing was probably i think we throw it into savings yeah that's awesome throw a chunk in there and then I, I think how you feel about your savings is is you know is nice another way on identity too that we, I want to talk about, you know, is like kind of the first step of, you know, financial freedom and what is freedom. Again, we, we realize number one, it's about you. It's about your identity. Yeah. And you have to understand where you're at today. Two, you have to manage, you have to spend less than you make. But I think another thing is have a, that long-term, have different perspective, have different lenses in which you can view your financial situation. So short-term, medium-term, long-term goals. Interesting. Right. And I think that just really helps put in because if, if I sacrifice what I want now for something I, more I want later, that's great. But I kind of like to see you need something, a reward system, right? Yeah. In order to yeah. generate a habit, you need rewards. Yeah. Just, and so I think separating those things into different time frames are great. So like short-term goals, mm. next, we're talking next three years, right? I want like, I can achieve something next three years, ideally it's six months even, like so one of those things. Is this something these short-term, mid-term, long-term goals, are these something that both we want as an expression of our identity, but also helps us, maybe the short-term helps us shape our identity a little bit more? 
I think it lets you, I think if without work on yourself, if you don't know where you're starting from and that's the difficult, which it is, it's hard. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's so hard to be, you can really understand where someone else is coming from and you can judge them. Yeah. You can judge them real easily. Yeah. Come by it honestly. Right. It's Pretty easy to do. It. Right. <laughs> and I think it's, it's so hard to do it in ourselves. And I think yeah. our goals, um, again, anything that can, if you just, you know, can reflect on and help no matter what you need goals to help shape your perspective, but also your goals kind of indicate your feelings a little bit too. Right. So like if you, uh, what you're reaching for is just, everything is just a reflection back on you. Like I love the idea that, you know, you don't have, if you have a dirty room, if you have mm-hmm. a cluttered room, you have a cluttered mind. There is no difference between yeah. the room and the mind. I love Preach that. Preach you know? And so it hit me like a ton of bricks whenever I was talking to my wife about that. And I'm pretty yes. dirty around the house. And she's like, so you have a cluttered mind. And I'm like, well, I really do. That's absolutely <laughs> right. So, but it's amazing how much I didn't think that mattered. And even just the act of cleaning my room, that's how my mind, it's really cool. Like I, I swear by it. Yes. And um, amen. Oh, come on. Yeah. Keep going, pastor. Preach it. Oh, I, I love it. So we have those goals. We know we need a budget. We, we're going to talk a lot about budgeting and, yeah. and, fi- and financial margin. Cause again, margin is the number one key for freedom. If I don't need, ugh. if I'm brand new to this financial lingo, what's margin? Yeah. So spending more, uh, spending less than you make. That's what we care. It's not about how much money you make. It's how much you have. Mo- what's your difference between what you make and what you spend? That's the, that's the magic. And you but want more of that. Back in the day when we used to write on paper. Remember mm-hmm. those things? Oh, the remember ancient the, times. The, yes. <laughs> the blue yeah. and red lines on the sides. You'd have margin. Mm. That is where your teacher would come in and make the edits. Right? Oh, yeah. It was literally room for mistakes. Yeah. Mm. There it is. Margin. Yep. And your financial life is room for mistakes. Well, and not, and, and I think, again, your finances, again, is just a gateway to you. So you want margin mm-hmm. in your life. Yeah, you, you want, want emotional margin. You want financial margin. No, all of it. Yeah. Like you, yeah. you, you need margin is such a, I mean, spiritual principle even. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's so critical. And so we're going to talk a lot. That's almost going to be a whole episode in and of itself is just margin. Hashtag and Sabbath. So, hey, say hi, to, <laughs> say hi to River for us. Oh gosh. Yeah. So I have a, I'm a new dad for those of you who don't know. And I have a baby daughter. Her name is river and she is the absolute best, but she's also waking up from a nap. So, Mm, you know, she's, she might, she might have to, you know, come say, Hey, but I, Oh, she's awesome. She's she's that's fine. I I think everybody would love to meet her. Yeah. 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 Well, we're going to see, we're going to see, cause we have, we have a few more minutes and we're going to see how, how upset she gets. Okay. uh, you know, good dad 101 right there. We got to finish the pod. We got to finish the podcast. You know, we just throw her in there. She'll be fine. Shout out to River. Shout out to River. Shout- yeah. Okay. So real quick on kind of our, uh, yeah. we've, we've defined, we've defined financial freedom. It's identity. Yep freedom is just your identity it's who you are it's not what you have it's what you know it's who you are we have to understand our starting point number two we have to manage our money well right so we need okay. goals to in order to do that we need margin whenever we're talking about you know again these building blocks of freedom we kind of have to clean up our mess first too so we need to clean like and so we can't clean up what we don't own number one but like debt right yeah it is if you want to talk about what's stressful Mm-hmm. freaking debt oh I'm my gosh you. there yeah. it is toot toot <laughs> yeah I'm on that it's boat. it's so hard and so we have like the debt snowball and debt avalanche methods are awesome yeah like i don't know uh again i would more i'm going to kind of link that in the show notes we have a little blog post about that that's really cool uh but the idea is that you want the debt snowball is uh, uh kind of if you imagine a snowball rolling down a mountain yeah right you pick up momentum and you get small wins earlier gotcha. to basically carry over into greater success they gotcha. work yeah and again both of them are are fantastic methods but we need to whenever we're we're, we're really stressed about debt it's so hard we kind of have to get out from what's holding us down before we can build the future yeah right and so i think clean up your house in that sense so clean up those finances is there is there such a thing as as good debt like oh per, yes for personal oh, yeah. finances not for business finances but for personal finances is there such a thing as good debt uh 
yeah, I, again, money is a tool. Debt is a tool. And so I, I'm, I'm absolutely, in a sense, I, I think all black and white answers are tough. I would say whenever okay. you're building identity, stay away from debt because okay. it's, I, but um, money is a tool. And, and, you know, cause again, if you, in order to build your credit score, you need to have debt. You need to have credit yeah. that you just pay off. And so there are smart ways to utilize those things and God, debt can be a tool. Um, but it's more of a, you know, when you're learning to play a sport, you know, they don't teach you the advanced stuff first. Yeah. They teach you the rules of the game. So I would smart. say smart. if you're, yeah, if you're listening to this now and you're saying, okay, like I want to have freedom, I'm in debt right now. Let's view debt as bad to yeah. start off personal debt, bad. Fair. And then we can kind of grow through that together later. Dang. Who knew? Yeah. You're such a wise man. Guru. We're doing it though. We're doing, oh, stop. No, no, no. You Just are. if you make enough mistakes, you can. You know, you can mm. help. You can help people. Come home. So it's cool. I'll be your Frodo. Oh, if you'll be it. my Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Lord of the Rings! What a freaking show! Ugh. Hot take. Don't like yeah. any of them. Yeah. Are we'll you being on. honest? I'm being real. I tried the books. I tried the movies. It's <sighs> guys. This might be the end of the podcast. <laughs> um, this is so tough. Oh, it's so good. okay. Well, and, and if I can quote hmm. you from the last podcast, I believe you said. Maybe it was even this one. Who knows? It was David's my boy. Mm. Right? I'd like to get a quote of that. So no more, no more. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so as a quick, quick side note into our friendship, yeah. move down the bench. Move down. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> quick, quick side story into our friendship. One of the most devastating days of our friendship. I am. Um, I'm not a I'm not a fan of beer. I do yeah. like I do like my drinks. I like yeah. my bourbons. I like my whiskey. Yeah. I don't like beer. And and Kate looked at me dead in the eye one day. I, <laughs> I love I love like a good a good craft brew. I know I sound like a jerk, but I love I just love beer. I love ciders. I love all of it. I really enjoy beer. Go ahead. We locked eyes. Yeah. Intently. And, and, <laughs> and I don't even think that there was a buildup to this, to be honest with you. At least in my memory, in my traumatic memory, there was not a buildup to this. It was just out of the blue. And Kate just says, you know, David, if you liked beer, this would, would have been the perfect friendship. And yeah. Like, Whoa, yeah. Wait, yeah. What's going on? My whole I sweep down. Yeah. You seem karate kid. Sweep the leg. That's yeah. what I, I am. Absolutely. Is it Cobra Kai? Whatever. Is that oh, him? Yeah. Sweep the leg, man. It sweep. Was, it was utterly devastating because I thought <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking we have the perfect friendship. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> not knowing. <laughs> yeah. See, just I, have, to say, yeah. I learned to like cider. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Uh, good times. Good. Fast times at Ridgemont high. Shout out. Uh, anyway. uh, anyway. <laughs> Shout out Shout outsiders. Shout out ciders. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Where were we? Where were we going? We've so we, we were talking about managing your money. We talked about cleaning up your debt. finances. Yep. And then again, debt. Not you know, again. Debt is a tool for right now when we're starting off on identity. Clean up your house. Get, Get out of it. the debt that you're under, and especially like credit card debt. Credit yeah. card debts are is is crippling. It's hard. Interest rates are are insane. Uh, we can talk about how to use credit to your advantage. We can talk about mortgages. We'll do that all later in the podcast and on the blog. Um, but right now, credit card, student loans, let's pay them down. We have methods and all that kind of stuff, but we're going to, we're more, we're talking building blocks today. We'll talk, uh, we'll go into all these later on in the podcast. So, and, that, and that's important to, to mention it as building blocks because it, I mean, if, if you're like me, your student loan is just astronomical Yeah, and to, to the thought of taking it all on is so overwhelming and yeah. you want to talk about stress, man, that, oh yeah that'll take over. So it's about the, the building blocks to tackle it, not, not, you know, taking it all head on at once. Yeah. It's, you know, each, each day is an opportunity and it's just chipping away at it. Yeah. And maintaining that hope. For sure. For sure. In the meantime. So yeah. So we're, we're cleaning up your finances. Number four, we want to invest in your future whenever we're talking about um, kind of financial building blocks of financial freedom mm -hmm. and, like, and, and what I mean by that is the best investment that you'll ever make always is you. Like, 
every single time. So I think student loans are, uh, it's, I think we can talk a whole podcast about how ridiculous it is for college. Oh my Lord. It's, it's insane. You know, like we should get, we should get Gary V on that. Yeah. Oh yeah. My goodness. My good, the man. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) But I I think investing in yourself is always going to be the right thing to do. Like you, no one will have your back. Like you have your back too. And I think taking ownership of yourself is great. Um, and you know, I go ahead, David. Yeah. So, so some of us, when I say that, I mean me. No, yes, will, some, will some, think, some will hear that, invest in yourself, and think, treat yourself. Mm. You know, we'll think, okay, if yeah. I'm going to invest in myself, I'm going to go buy the car I want. You know, if I'm going to mm. invest in myself, I'm going to go get the laptop that I want. You know, whatever it is, because yeah. I can, I can, um, you know, articulate or or reason myself into well this was a good purchase for my future when sure. really i just wanted a new laptop you know what i'm saying yeah for sure oh yeah oh so guilty what, for sure what do you mean by invest in yourself yeah uh i would say invest in your mind and so if it's if it's making you um any type of education self-education that's making you grow um i think that's excellent i think Nine times out of 10 or 99 times out of 100, if it's a material thing that you're trying to talk yourself into, Mm -hmm. probably not. You're investing in your ego and you're investing in, uh, you know, yeah, hello, right? (laughs) And and there's a place for that. Like, I'm not saying that buying things is bad, but Mm -hmm. it's investing in what's going to make you grow. And I think also just realizing that everything has more, there's more than the cost of the price tag on a thing, right? And I think just realizing that you're not just spending a hundred dollars here, what you're actually doing. And we talk about compound interest, you know, a hundred dollars today on, you know, let's just say, you know, two new or new Xbox game. I think games right now are insane. They're like 70 bucks for like new ones. Inflation here. That's insane. how I've managed to not have video games. Yeah. It, it's insane. They're, they're and crazy. also I'm terrible at them. So <laughs> yeah. It's like, Oh man. Yeah. I, I thought I used to be good. And you know, playing with these like you know eight-year-olds at church and you're like they're just kicking my I'm like what happened i used to feel like i was talented but it's like no not anymore <laughs> rocket league they just rock my world I'm like what is happening um but yeah i i, I think just the idea that the the hundred dollars that you spend today you're mm. actually sacrificing yeah you know freedom in the moment and also you know with compound interest that in 15 years is worth roughly 10 percent return roughly three grand. Yeah. So it's like, so like that hundred dollars is actually, you know, repurposed is there's more than just the price tag. So I think just realizing that like, you know, yeah, you're, you're buying something, but you're actually enslaving yourself with the thing that you think is going to get you out of it. So balance, but if if I'm being honest, sometimes even understanding that even that knowledge isn't quite enough to stop me from yeah. purchasing that $100 thing. That's half the battle though, right? Just knowing yourself. Like, so don't give yourself access to it, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, like, why fight a battle that you don't have to? Yeah. You know, I, I have, like, like for me, if I have cash, it's as good as gone. If I carry around physical cash, yeah. I will, there's no chance it's coming home with me. Because for me, it's, it, it's like, it's, if it's not in my bank account, if I don't see the digital number, it doesn't oh. exist. It's free money interesting it is free money no like literally i'm like it's not in the account <laughs> i've already so spent true. it because i'm not accounting for it it's gone Bye-bye. that's so true if i ever have cash the first thing i'm doing is depositing the money i literally i have to go to the bank yeah. right and then also just have a separate card that you don't see how much money you have on have a separate have a separate checking account helps your credit score don't close it keep 100 bucks it's your allowance of what you can spend right like oh, interesting so like, I, th- I, th- I think just being, yeah, work smarter, not harder. You don't yeah. have, just don't fight a battle that you don't have to. And so, yeah, but, it, but again, if you just know that about yourself, it's, it's crazy. You know, like I, I was working with a client who uh, every single time they got their paycheck, they, or, or uh, yeah, every time they got their paycheck, they spent roughly $150 shopping every time because it was just so exciting. Right. Wow. So what they did was they blocked uh, they blocked access to the sites that they wanted oh, on those genius. days. That's it. So she, like, this person could not just go purchase from these sites. They just blocked it. There's an app I can, oh, I think I can link it. Can I link that? Yeah, I think I can. Again, 
but you can just block a site real easy. You don't have access to it for this day. Right. I know Genius. it's, it, but it's, Genius. it's 300 bucks a month is not nothing. Like that's, that's pretty substantial yeah. in savings and yeah. So it's, it's not bad, but again, just smarter, not harder, but again, knowing yourself, what are your tendencies are, is all that good stuff. Yeah. So it, so. it really does start with self-awareness. Like that. Oh yeah, for sure. It's it, cool. everything that we're talking about. If you don't have your identity, right. Everything else is, is going to come out just off. Like you're going to yeah. be like, wow, why am I not? Do-? It's like, well, cause your identity is just, you're actually, you're doing in line with your, with what your identity says you are. Yeah. Like it's just, if you're not really consciously and lack of term, perfecting that, shaping that, molding yeah. that into something that you want to be in someone who's free. Yeah. It's going to come out. It's going to come out weird. Right. I feel like we need to talk a little bit more about identity then. And maybe not yeah. this show. Maybe another No, I think, I think, I think we can jump in. Cause like, I, I think investing in your, in your future We'll just, we can jump into identity right after, but it's really just who you are and yourself always is the number one, but also mm-hmm. just having that longer term horizon. So it's, it's retirement. It's, it's your, um, it's real estate. It's just kind of growing that pool because financial freedom, you know, Warren Buffett, once again, if you don't figure out a way to make money in your sleep, you're going to work until you're dead. And it's true. Whoa. Like, and so Warren, Warren's just, he wow. has all, he has what all the quote. He has all the stuff. Yeah, it's real good. And so, and I think you just have to be actively involved. But again, it all starts with identity. So let's, yeah, let's dive in, David. Let's dive into identity a little bit more. Let's dive in. So I'm thinking, you know, with this whole idea of affording freedom starts with identity. It, it's 80% behavioral. Mm-hmm. What, uh, what is the first step in discovering your identity? I mean, you can't escape the fact that like self-reflection, like, like you have to, there's lots of really great tools out there. There's, you know, Myers-Briggs, there's the Enneagram, there's, you know, oh, med- yeah. just straight up meditation. There's, you know, Love the them. disc, there's ocean, O C E A N. Like mm-hmm. there's tons of different things at free online that, oh, yeah. that you can take. And understanding your personality will be helpful, but it still isn't quite the core of you, right? Like it still isn't quite your well, identity. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think again, those are just building blocks to trying to help you get there. And it's a journey, right? I don't think, yeah. you know, uh, another quote like to know others is knowledge, to know yourself, wisdom. Right. And it's like, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's hard and, and you're, and you change, right? Yeah. Like you're, yeah. you're growing, you're what you like. And, and, and so you kind of have to be in tune with yourself. And I, I, yeah, personally, like the Enneagram, love it. I think it's done more. You guys introduced, I think, right. Weren't you guys the first, I think so. Cause I know you gave us the book, Yeah, but I, I don't think, oh man, that's the done more for just giving you language is so helpful. Yeah, yeah. And oh. honestly, I think, and I think that's why the tools are so good is even if you don't agree with the results or like whatever, you take the test for sure, just, just reading about the different personality types helps equip you and give you language to describe it. And when you can name it and bring it to your conscience, then yeah. you have some sort of control over it. Then you can, well, yeah, then you Absolutely. can say, oh, I actually don't like that about myself. Right. If you can be honest with yourself, then you can say, yeah. oh, and now, and now that you know what you don't like, you are equipped to start addressing it and start changing it and growing out of it. Well, it's like, there's kind of the, you know, the whole adage, you know, you can't beat, um, like you have to acknowledge first yeah, in order to overcome anything. But you also step before that is you can't beat something that you can't define. Mm -hmm. So if you can't even define the thing that you're talking about, like giving a name to something, giving language to something changes that thing. Like it, 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 you know, changing, you know, my wife and I just had a baby, right? the baby to river is it changed like she is she she is different because she has a name like it's it's there's something like it's 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 she became more real in the sense because of the name like i i I, there's there's so much there's there's something so powerful about defining that in a way a thousand percent yeah and so yeah I, i i think meditation is great i think mindfulness is super important yeah and i think just getting into the habit of um, even just critically thinking and asking yourself, even if you don't find the answer, will only like good thought 
only it, it just yields good results yeah. like it just and again we're for not sure. looking for perfection we're just looking for a journey for sure. so uh, two things that i think would be um really helpful on a journey of especially if you're just beginning it um well, now that I'm thinking about it, three things. Gosh darn it, David. Oh, oh golly. He thought he was doing good, folks. <laughs> <laughs> three things would be um, serving, um, your joy center. Mm. And now I'm forgetting what the third thing even was. So we're going to start with those two. Oh, I love it. I love joy center. I so, think that's going to be, that's going to be fun. So because serving is so passionate about, but I'm, I'm oh, ready to dive in. Yeah, let's dive in. And the third thing was community. So community and serving mm. probably go, go hand in hand. So like you cannot define yourself without others. Like the art of neuroscience, oh, right? We like, can talk about that. Oh, conscious agents. Woo! Come on. Oh, yeah. Come on, oh, Jordan Peterson. We can, come yeah, on. We, oh yeah. All of it. It's, you can go down a real dark, deep rabbit hole. And it's the idea that, um, you are actually defined by others. So most neuroscientists, and I, and I say that as most, it's not a unanimous thing. Sure. Yeah, we'll yeah. say that the key to happiness is other people. Sure. And, um, there's a lot of really great science out there that talks about when someone walks into the room and you recognize and identify or don't, right? Even if they're strangers, just how they are, controls your blood pressure, controls your heart rate, your breathing sure. rate. Like it just kind of takes over and sure. um, like who you are and how you are in a moment actually depends on those around you. So surround yourself with good people, get to know who you are. Sure. And so the show me your friends, show me your future quote is, or, you know, is are all, yeah, look at you, look at you. I love it. You got, you got love them all. It. Little yeah. nuggets, little nuggets. Yeah. Find ways to um, significantly serve. So I love churches. Yeah. I'm passionate about the local church. Yep. Teaching Sunday school might not be that significant way of serving that really brings out a sense of identity, right? Like, sure really find somebody in need preferably if you have a relationship with that person you know someone who needs yeah. help really find a way to assist them it brings something out of you that shows your true self yeah. and the last and, one go ahead well i, I wanted to touch base because i know you know whenever as soon as we men, you know honestly as soon as we probably mentioned that david was a pastor there's probably there, there's some of you out there that like that probably mm -hmm. struck a negative chord that's fair right if, if we yeah. can just be honest <laughs> right? like, the church is and and i can Definitely, like David and I have talked a lot about that, and it can be the church can be hard, and it mm -hmm. can be. But I think um, the principles, like, I love the quote, even from like, you're really not mad at, you're not mad necessarily with the institution, you're mad with the people. Yeah, and I and I love that, and and just and you're also again the the idea uh, the principles are sound, like mm -hmm. serving even outside of a Christian context. You can yeah. It's, it's For testable, sure. right? Like it's something that like will only when your life is not about you and it's about others, the quality of your life is improved. Yeah. Period. And that's and that's just objective and you know, you can study that. In fact, if you are a Christian serving in a church context, I would encourage you to also find a way to serve outside of it. That's of good. That's really I, good. I really think that's where you'll come alive and that's where other people will see the church come alive as well. Yeah. Being the church, which is a totally. whole different thing, but and it's a big problem right now too. That, that's a we could talk about that, man. man. Anyway, bookmark. Here we go. <laughs> Save for later. Yeah. What was your last one here? The Joy Center. Yeah, so, I'm excited, dude. This thing is so freaking cool. So it's a yeah, it's a, it's a part of your brain that never stops developing. You can Google it. You're probably not going to find a whole lot. You'll find um, stuff of like benefits of the Joy Center, but like you won't find a whole lot of studies on it it's you got to like a dig deep into like i love it yeah we can put references in in the show notes cool um so it's a part of your brain that never stops developing most brains um stop developing around the age of 25 and all that means is like different parts of your brain start to grow connections right so if we know our brain it has a bunch of neurons and it sends signals back and forth and that sending it back and forth connects different parts of your brain which then you are then a functioning human being. The joy center system never stops developing. So you can either diminish it or grow wow. it. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. It is the only part of your brain that can override your main drives. So your main drives being food, sexual impulse, uh, terror, and rage. Wow. 
if you're That's not, good. yeah, if you're That's not, cool. isn't it, isn't it? If you're not feeding your joy center, you mm. will naturally look for other ways to fill that deficiency. The other ways, um, sexual, multiple sexual partners, uh, violence, drugs, and alcohol. Yeah. Right. Man. Crazy. Yeah, Crazy. I get, well, it, I think too, uh, depression and all those things, like mm. it's, it's, it's a spiral, right? Yeah. And it pulls, even if you're not living in, you know, like your mind's so powerful, but like, it, it's so easy that those are, those are the coping mechanisms that you just named, right? Like yeah. that's when you're depressed, you drink, it's that you're looking for that escape, right? Yep. And I think, man, that's, that's so cool that it's just, it's wired. I, man, in. I, I want to read about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. wired that's, in your brain. And so you can develop it, um, by practicing like mindfulness meditation, yeah. Uh, but focusing specifically on gratitude. So if you think of something, you know, that's happened in your day, if this is something you do when you go to bed at night, and you're reflecting on your day, you just focus on one thing. I, I personally, I do it when I wake up, I'm stumbling into the shower and I'm just thinking, what's something good in my life? Mm -hmm. And it can be, don't, don't, you know, overlook the small things. Like oftentimes, like probably 80% of the time what I'm grateful for is hot running water because I'm in a shower. Come on. And, I, and I'm grateful for hot running water. That's a big deal. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and just focus on it and let it just absorb it. And you are then more likely to recall positive things than the negative things because your brain was evolved to look for negative things, right? Yeah. Our, our well, survival, for sure. Exactly. Our ancestors that, could, that were alerted and got out of there or were able to fight better, yeah. right? passed on those genes so they were more alert they passed it on so well oh side note here this yeah. was wild yes. so Love wild. there's this there's a study that like you actually don't like a baby if you put a if you have like a baby in a controlled environment uh -huh. and you basically put one object here a glass um let's just like a glass walkway okay uh -huh. And then another object, so like two chairs, glass walkway, what the baby can't necessarily perceive the walkway, but it would be totally fine. Fascinating. It will not walk over the edge. Wow. So it knows. Well, well, but the thing is it doesn't, but it can't articulate what it doesn't see like, oh, there's, there's something like yeah. a cliff and I have to be careful. It sees something that you fall. It's kind of like whenever you touch your hand on the, the best example, I'm doing a bad job, but if you touch your hand on the stove, yeah, right. You immediately pull back your hand before the heat has come. Yeah. But you're not consciously thinking of it. Why? Sure. It's because like you, your brain just knows before it yeah. proceeds. Bad. And that's, it's, cr that's wild. Yeah. That is super cool that a baby wouldn't do that. Yeah. Even as an just, infant. That's so cool. It's, it's wild. It's really cool. And so one, one, a great way, a very simple way to develop your joy center, which, and the reason I bring up the joy center is because studies have found that those with highly developed joy centers report saying, I feel most myself. I feel like I'm being myself. Those okay. with diminished joy centers, right? This kind of makes sense. Those who are depressed yeah, and, for sure. and sad for will sure. say that they don't feel yeah. like themselves. That sure. They can't be themselves. Yeah. Um, one of the greatest ways to develop a joy center is actually not necessarily what you do, but what you cut out. You know, cut out negative social media feed, cut out the, your news feed because so your brain, good. your brain is literally looking for the negativity, which is why bad news sells. Yeah. Your brain is hungry for it. It wants to know how to survive. And so it's going to gobble up all the bad news it can. Yeah. That's so good. So that's cut so it good. out, limit it out, and your joy center will just naturally grow. Well, and then and you fill it with good things. Well, one thing, yeah. And I think, I know we're, 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 we're running on time here. Are we doing okay for our, our audience? I'm talking to David, really. We're doing, we're doing happy. We're so. doing happy. He I'm gave happy. me the nod. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm doing good. You know, we, yeah. we threw River in a deep, dark hole. She's doing fine. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> um, no, but uh, I think one thing that's really helped me is it's kind of, it's amazing how often, or actually never, you're actually fully, you know, in like just engrossed in the present moment mm. and and that's really all meditation is it's like yeah. if you it is unbelievably hard to sit and just focus on your breath without your mind wandering yeah because like even when you think you're doing nothing you're constantly having thoughts and there's so much joy yeah in just being here like being nowhere else 
nowhere to go, nothing That's to do. So good. Even when you're, do, it's, there's something just so powerful about being 100% in this moment. Right. And, and I, I, I've never been happier whenever I'm just, in whatever I'm doing, like what, yeah. cause you just realize the beauty in things and you get like a, a sense of peace that you normally don't have. And anxiety doesn't live like it, yes. it's, 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 it's external. It doesn't live in the present. It's future based. Right. Yeah. It's what anxiety is all. What if stress is all what so if good. dude. And that's and, exactly like, it may be counterintuitive, but that's like, that helps those impulse purchases. Right. That yeah. helps, that helps those, those moments where oh, I'm about to drop 150 bucks because I just got my paycheck. Mm. But if you're actually in the moment and you're present and you know who you are, you're less likely to make those types of decisions. Yeah, no, this, that's so good. That's so good. I think, I think baby river might make an appearance here. Come just on. Real just real quick. Bring her in. Yeah. Bring her in. Bring us all joy. Hey, sweet girl. <gighs> river. I know you can't hear me oh, river, yeah. but hello. Yo, shout out Rachel. I Shout out, Rachel. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Rachel. Oh, yeah. Hey, River. This is River's first podcast. I hope she can make a. Wow. I hope she can make a an appearance yes. every now and then. I'd love that, and I, I'm sure the listeners would love that too. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, she's just so content right now. She's the. Best. That's the goal. She, <laughs> she, yeah. Honestly, it's it's yeah. I think there's just something to. Babies are just they're only living the present moment, and there's yeah. something. I mean. A, a baby smile, oh my gosh, like a happy baby. Mm. It's just, ugh. You can drink it up. Yeah, seriously. It's so good. It's so good. So the, the yeah. reason why we brought all of that stuff up, to tie it back to, you know, affording freedom identity. All the way back. We did. All the way back is because if you know who you are, right, then you, you live out freely those yeah. values. And you, you know make, what to do. You don't have to worry about, I mean, things come natural. Like when you know yeah. who you are, you know what to do and you don't really have to train yourself. Like an athlete, mm -hmm. for example, you don't have to worry about an athlete staying in shape because athletes work out, right? Like yes. when you, when you have that root. It, so again, the most common thing that you see is athletes that stop working out 90%. What happens? They're no longer an athlete. Therefore they gain all this weight back. Right. Mm. Like it's just because their identity, identity. has changed. So therefore their situation has changed. Right. And that's, that's kind of your identity will always, well, not always, but typically will predecess a change an outward change. Yeah. When identity changes, your, your situation changes. Man. It's just good stuff. That's so good. That is probably a good place to, to wrap it up. Yeah. Put I a think, bow on you know, this. Where do we, what do we want to do next? What's our next episode going to be about? You know, I, I, I think we have a, a, a few, a few bookmark options, but you know, I think we're going to have to, David, what do you want to talk about next, my friend? What do you what are you feeling? Well, I, I wrote a, a blog that we can talk about next about hitting your first wall, right? So like when you have oh. this, you have this new goal, right? I you want to be financially that. free, you're living out this new identity, and then you hit a wall, what do you do? Because you just want to give up. You've, you've messed up, right? You've made some big mistake. You blow through your budget. Now what do I do? How, how do I rebound? Why, why even try to keep moving forward? I love that a lot. Yeah, I I, I think um, I think that's a, that's a really natural place to go. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, it, it <laughs> life's hard. Yeah, right, yeah. Life is difficult, and the idea that you're going to go unscathed through life is just yeah. not a possibility. Yeah. So I think understanding that failure is not final is just so um, just important in your walk. Yeah. So that's big time. I love it. Awesome. Well, we will see you all next week. Until next time, River, say hello. Yeah. Say. Okay.